Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Benjamin Magnus Plays Hearts of Iron 4. Now, I would like to tell all of you guys that episodes 1 through 11 are all recorded in one sitting. So, this is the first time I have gotten to actually address anything anybody has said in the comments section uh, because of the nature of batch recording. And I would like to start off by saying that I'm very glad that the vast majority of you guys have been enjoying the series despite my... Uh, normal levels of saltiness regarding the game um and what uh and i what i i don't know what i th thought was more interesting actually playing through the game or reading the comments on this series because my god i gotta say that while the vast majority of the people enjoyed the series the people who don't oh man oh man those are some entertaining uh comments to read most of the time it's people who either don't understand game mechanics and are unwilling to admit that they're wrong or uh people who are interested in seeing a more like quill style of gameplay where it's very slow very micro management intense very uh heavy on the meta gameplay just very very like oh god i gotta do everything perfect or the world is coming to an end and that's just not what you're going to get here a because i said that in the very first episode and b because that's not my style style of gameplay i don't micro i don't meta i just play for shits and grins basically uh but yeah we left off last episode uh having you know this this all all of Siberia except for a little bit over here is is mine the Soviet Union still exists as like an OPM right here and uh I think what's gonna end up happening is we're just gonna end up playing with the the allies for a while and again the frame rate is really starting to uh to tank on me which is which is unfortunate unfortunate indeed uh I we could probably overrun vast swaths of allied territory before it would become problematic. Hmm. Because there's nobody on the front lines. But, you know, we might want to actually get some, some more slash better troops in the field. Um, looks like some guys are a little low on supplies still. Let's take a look at our logistics. Uh, Anti-tank guns, we're still a little low on. Anti-aircraft guns, because I just put those in there. Got lots of fighters in reserve. Lots of nice fighters in reserve. Gotta say, uh, I'm pretty disappointed with the with the air uh, the changes to the to the air game. Mostly because they're they're really not any actual changes. Um, they're just uh, UI changes, not actually any gameplay changes. Like it's nice that you could see this the the radius of your planes and you can see on the map easier where they are. But they didn't actually change anything. Air, air combat is still kind of the same as it was before. Useless. I mean, I've, 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 I've had nothing other than 400 or four, 500 fighters uh, this entire game, and it really hasn't... I mean, that's all I've needed is a few hundred fighters to knock out some Soviet bombers, and that's 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 basically it. Haven't needed anything else. Well, let's uh, go ahead and build another airport right in there just so that we have it. You know what? Might as well build a couple. Um, Do some radar up here. I actually was talking to some people, and I probably sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist uh, when I say this, but I don't anticipate any major game changes for the next year. I, I expect the next uh, the next DLC to be pretty much the same as this one, and I expect the the fourth DLC, the one after that, to actually make significant changes and improvements to the game. That's that's my prediction, and and the reason behind it is uh, because of the the what's it called uh, the season pass they sold. Uh, they sold a lot of season passes. And a lot of people, and, and and they they talked pretty big about how many season passes they sold, and a lot of people I don't think paid a lot of attention. Hang on, what? Why? Seven divisions, five divisions. Owner United Kingdom. That's why. I was about to say, why is this broken up? 
Poland, United Kingdom, Poland. That's why it's broken up. Oh, like I was saying, um, they sold a lot of season passes. They they talked real big about how many season passes they sold, and the season pass, what a lot of people didn't realize when they purchased it, only covers the first three expansion passes or expansion packs, the first three DLCs, immersion packs, whatever they want to call them, and only covers the first three. Not all of them for all of time, just the first three. So they already have a lot of people's money when it comes to uh, the DLCs. So there's not a lot of incentive to put a lot of effort into making the DLCs really good and, and you know, game changers when everybody already paid for them. So that's, that's, I mean, maybe I sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist nut, but that's what I think is, because, oh God, it's, how, how do I say this? Um, Together for Victory sucked. Everybody agrees Together for Victory, well, most everybody agrees Together for Victory sucked. Um, and Paradox and their dev diaries actually said, hey, we listened to the, we, we listened to the fans. We realized the mistakes we made in Together for Victory, so we're not going to make those mistakes again. We're going to change the way we do things, and we're going to come out with a better pack. And they basically just copy and pasted Together for Victory and then fix, and then filled in some art elements and gave, and gave us this. It's basically the same thing. Four focus trees and art elements with no major gameplay changes. And I, I when, when you say... Yeah, we, we realize we made a mistake and, and we're going to change things and then give me the same shit over again. Uh, I'm not going to take it seriously. Uh, what? <laughs> There's, you don't have any other orders. And I'm actually just going to say, like, I think we're just going to tell them to march forward for a while until you get to here. Oh, you know what? That's the wrong one. Fuck. Uh, purple army. I gotta change your color so I don't confuse you again. You could be pink. Or fuchsia. That's- there we go. So to let me draw through Poland. Oh, that's- that is some bullshit. I'm not allowed to draw an offensive line in another country. It's... I'm not... I'm planning an attack. I'm not executing it. Oh, there we go. Wait. Oh, you didn't... Maybe, maybe I just read that wrong. Let's see. I was... Cannot draw offensive line here. Okay, 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 so... I cannot draw offensive line here, cannot draw an offensive line here. So I can't start it there? Nope. Okay, so I was right. So... I'm not allowed to draw an offensive line there for what reason? Poland is in the Allies. It's fighting an offensive war. Oh, you know what? Do I have a... Maybe that's it. Do I have a non-aggression pact? Dutch East Indies is a puppet. It's guaranteed by the United Kingdom. Has military access to China and Siam. It's improving relations. Non-aggression pact with China, Siam, People's Republic of China. All right, maybe I have a non-aggression pact with the United Kingdom, and because the United Kingdom is the leader of the faction. Uh. Well, that doesn't look like it. There's got to be a reason. I mean, all I was trying to do was plan for the future. I didn't actually want to do it. But let's take a look at well, you know, this red army it. here. Or, yeah. So you can... What? What bullshit is this?
this? So you can... Wait, wait, wait. You can draw the line in a country you border, but not the one beyond it? That is some stupid bullshit. Okay. <laughs> uh... Gain puppet war goal on Turkey. I could go to war with Turkey. Are they being... They're being guaranteed, right? Let's cancel that. This fighting an offensive war is in the Axis faction with other nations. So that would... That would declare war on the Axis. Okay. Is this, uh, fascist France? Yeah, that's fascist France. So the Axis have a, uh, a pretty solid line from, you know, through the Alps into southern France and into Spain. So, huh. I got a lot of options. Oh, heavy cruiser, battleship models, torpedo bombers, transmarines, uh, destroyers, submarines, naval bomber models. I guess we'll do destroyers because, if I remember correctly, late ships are still unbalanced to be in and kind of more powerful than than heavy ships. I remember early days, light cruiser spam was a thing, or just, like, destroyers sinking 30 submarines, or submarines sinking 120 uh, merchant ships. So I guess that's a thing. So, like, it's got to be really wonky in several areas because of the border gore. <laughs> that's got to If I want to declare war on the Allies, that is really going to mess things up. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. Well, I can add a ship designer. Range doesn't really matter to me. Shore bombardment. Production cost down. Oh, that's close. Oh, so I can do this one. Naval speed, convoy rating, efficiency. Meh. Yeah, that's that that's a little problematic when it comes time to uh draw some offensive lines because that means pe every single time I get to a break where the countries get fucked up, I'm gonna have to tell them to stop and redo it. That means you guys could I could tell you to go here, but I can't tell you to go any further than that. Okay, and then we got to go to this one, and here, so will they go? No, they won't go in there. Oops. Uh, we'll just do it like this. Uh, right click. There we go. Three divisions, four divisions. Yeah, this is this is fucked up uh, because while the while the lines aren't broken, they are broken. So everybody's not actually getting assigned. So here I've got seven and seven. So that's fine. That's all these guys. This one I'm gonna have to micro these a little bit more. Oop. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll say front line, and then I guess this section will be in charge of our offensive line. Like, right there. Seven. And then we'll have another section who will be in charge of taking out, uh... Just this part right here. Those five divisions. <laughs> and then we'll go again down here. And we'll say... Huh. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is a wonky little... Transylvanian area, isn't it? 
these 12 divisions. Huh. Just, uh, I got, well, this is gonna be wonky offensive line. Those 12 divisions. And then, orange. It's just gonna get told to go here. Five divisions, 19 divisions. If I tell them to, if I put up a second line, like in here, nope, can't do that. And then, red, ar this, this red army. Yeah, offensive line, so we're gonna have to do a couple right there. And then tell these ones to go, like, right here. Right here. Oh, oh, because that's France. Can't tell them to go there. <laughs> oh, that's humorously bad. That is, that is, that is, that is bad on a whole new level. That's a, that's a problem I've always uh, run into. Even for, be, whenever you get to a break in the country's border, the battle planner has a bit of a, a hissy fit. Now let's get some divisions training. This is my... Let's see, let's throw in another army. Boom. Bosnia. Uh, let's construction. Thinking we tell them to improve the infrastructure all over the place. Especially on the front line. Because that's what we'll be fighting. But, you know. Go ahead and just bloop, bloop, bloop. Infrastructure all over the place. Let's have them do it behind the front lines, too. I mean, I, I, I've got all these factories set to build stuff, so. And they're going to start popping these off pretty quick. I'm also going to be able to have a lot more fighters, for sure. Like, I can make another wing of fighters. Oh, I still got a lot of these old ones. So let's say, uh, shift click 100. Let's do another 500, okay. So you got two wings of 500. And then I guess, I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of wait to see what happens between the Axis allies. Germany fell, but the rest of them seem to be holding out pretty well. Let's see here. Decryption, get some more information. And we're working on some bombers finally. I think we'll just do, probably just tell them to build strategic bombers and nothing else. Because we're still, at a si we're still in the situation where range is the most important factor. So, so stupid, but that's, that's just, that's the bag we're dealt with. A lot of people have asked me, like, or, or asked me, told me, suggested that I build, like, heavy tanks and stuff like that. Uh, heavy tanks are really pretty bad in this game, just because of the way production works. Uh, it's an inefficient use of resources, and this infantry template is by far the most powerful, most efficient thing you could possibly do. It is just the most effective, and uh, the, mo the most eff effective template you can build. Anything outside of that is just inefficient comparatively. And considering I'm working, at least for now, on a limited set of resources, uh, I mean, I have more resources now, but we kind of just got the Soviet Union, so it's going to be a little bit before we uh, really have broad access to all of their shit while we, you know, kind of build things up. Those are some funky-looking bombers. Uh, it's 44, so we could also work on a new fighter. But for now, we'll do strategic bomber. Do we have any more research popping off soon? 64 days. I am kind of interested to see what happens with the... Uh, everything's pretty calm. Does this line... Br oh, yeah. You know what we should do is make sure that they're... Nope. Well, I guess it just broke itself there. 
I had a lot of people in the comments being, uh, uh, giving suggestions, um, some people, uh, demanding I, I do things to increase the efficiency of my gameplay, um, and, and generally my, my response to people who's, who, who are upset that I'm not playing optimally is, what does it matter? I, I won against the Soviet Union playing the way I wanted to, so what does it matter if it was slightly suboptimal? Oh boy. I love that the Netherlands took like all of Germany. Well, most of Germany. The United Kingdom got a big swath. It still bugs me that Germany got to to have any say in the peace deal with the Soviet freaking Union when they capitulated to the Allies. Uh nope. I'm sorry, it's more interesting if I don't join. Oh, some people were so salty about that, that I didn't join the Axis. But that was contrary to the point of the series. The whole point was to just do this alone. That was the entire point, was just be Romania, without any friends, alone in the world. Joining the Axis, joining the Comintern, joining the Allies, of course, would make things way easier. It also make things way less interesting. Whew. Not really much to do. Everything is repaired, right? Yeah, everything's repaired. So we're just kind of waiting now. Waiting for some more troops, waiting on things to build, building a lot of the synth factories. My military factories are pretty good right now. Uh, production. So these ones are, we're still upgrading to the highest class of weapons, um, but uh, we, we're getting the efficiency pretty high. Uh, stockpiling, 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 stockpiling. Uh, Anti-tank guns, stockpiling. Anti-aircraft guns, 14 per day. So we're getting up there. Definitely getting up there. And the, the frame rate really starts chugging late game. Doesn't really seem like there's a lot going on either. It's just kind of the fighting over the Alps. Definitely seems like the AI is having equipment trouble too. I can actually see some of the the battles taking place. Are all my troops like maxed out on experience? No, they're they're working up their way up to what is it, veteran? Do have some tank divisions, which army is this? Oh, I have a, I have a whole army sitting here that's not attached to anything. Forgot about that. Wow. Uh. Oh, you could train. You guys can hang out there, train. There's no problem with that. Get the experience levels up. Building an entire new army, and I have an entire army city here doing nothing. Yeah, I wish I could get the game to actually... I'm at the point where I'm just like, okay, let's speed five till something interesting happens. I know I'm. I, it's waiting on me to do something interesting, but I'm kind of waiting on uh, some production and training up that, that new army. I'd like to have another in the field. I mean, isn't it sad that I managed to beat the Soviet Union with such with such a small array of men? Let's see, how many men have died in this war? So Italy's still up. Spain's lost two million, that's impressive. Capitulated out, but haven't lost a single man. 
United Kingdom, 2 million. France, 1.72. Poland, British Raj, Canada, New Zealand. All pretty small. Netherlands is not that high. Denmark, Norway. United States, only 300,000. Japanese Chinese War. I actually had someone, ext wow, extremely, extremely insistent that all casualties from all wars are calculated on on this screen. Um, when I was showing the casualties at the beginning of the other war, and I was like, I've lost three, they've lost 300,000, I've lost 300. Uh, the person was like, no, Germany has killed those people. Well, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. And then he suggested that this was the only way to, uh, this screen was the only way to see actual casualties. But that's also not how that works because it shows my losses and only up for, only up to, up, up, up to a year ago. It's just, that, that's the, 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 what I, what I meant when I said that Soviet Union declared war on Iraq. Alrighty. Um, when, when the people who are usually the most vocal are also usually the most wrong. I could definitely make the, the lines a little bit bigger. Is there any resistance in this territory? Not really. Modern destroyers finished. Uh, submarines. Uh, let's do that. Oh, we can do capital ships too. I thought that was ex mutually exclusive, but it's not. Uh, so you and um, Garrison. Which one's Garrison? I really wish you could overlay this stuff. Let's just grab a bunch of stuff and say, hey, make sure there's nothing going on in this area as well. That's not a problem for you, is it? Garrisoning all of the Soviet Union with 24 MP divisions? Oh, Finland. Are you friends with anybody? Yeah, let, let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, the second I do it, the, within an hour, the allies were like, nope, 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 nope. All right, how are you guys doing? Oh, they're starting to get up there. Concentrated industry, factory state, factory output, dockyard output. All right, we got production efficiency cap, production efficiency growth. Or production efficiency cap and production efficiency retention. I'm going to go with retention because I do tend to change out the production lines a bunch. That, that is something I do. Alright, infantry equipment. And now we can go to air. Do I ever... How far did I get down here? Yeah, not too far. But I do want uh, the new models. Get that stuff going. Not that the old models are terrible, it's just new models are new. And I got all this air experience. I... Questioning Finnish sovereignty, yeah, big deal. Let these guys get up. I kind of wish they would uh, replace the, th I think I mentioned it before, this system. Um, the experience system with the one from Hoi 3. I think the, I like the one from Hoi 3 better just because it's more dynamic. This one, you only have, what, four different levels. You can have a minus 25%, 0%, plus 25%, plus 50%, I think it is. And in, in Hoi 3, it's a base it's a base 100 system, 0 to 100. And you get exactly to, like, the, the 100th decimal point uh, a bonus to combat based on exactly how much experience you have. So... If you come off the production line at zero, you get no bonus. If you come off the production line at 30 because of how uh, you have your laws set up, you start with 30 and then you go, th you, you know, just go up as you go through combat. So it's exactly how much. It's not that magic number where you get from, um, you know, you, you know, from 99.9% .9 to 100% uh, and, it, and it flops over and gives you a huge bonus. 
It's just a more dynamic range. I think that would that would fit a little bit better. It's not like that's something that would be hard to implement at all. I think it I think this is just a example of the further streamlining of of the of the of the company in, in general. Streamlining. Boy, do I hate that word. Hate the word streamlining because generally the word streamlining mean, mean, uh, actually means stripping features out. Taking stuff that was in the game and removing it and asking you to pay for it later or just removing it entirely because they don't think that the, uh, the user base is interested in complexity. Yeah, we're doing really well now. If I'm going to fight the allies, I definitely want to have a, like, a really, really large base of um, supplies so that there's uh, not a big deal with attrition once the war starts. That's a, a mistake I know a lot of people make, is they they get their divisions up to 100%, and they're like, oh, I'm fine, but there's no reserves. So they get into combat, take casualties, and then those units just get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker because there wasn't a base of a uh, uh, logistical base set up. Pretty good fighters. Probably end up swapping out one of these lines for bomber production when I can. Maybe even support equipment, just because, fuck it, I don't think, I don't need two full runs of support equipment. But I really don't have anything else to spend it on right now. Building up those radar installations. And we're getting the roads built, too. Not that it's a big deal, but it might help at the very start of the war. The radar installations doesn't help a whole lot, unless you build them up, well, even then. I might be I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could roll back one of those pa Pax Americana. Fuck you, Americans. I don't think I could roll this back to... Which one is the next? Was the one down? Extensive. This is recruitable population 20%. 5%, 10%. I wonder how... I wish it would actually tell me uh, exactly in the tooltip if it actually told you what it, how much it would it would change, because if this knocked me down a million manpower to like six hundred thousand, I'd be like, okay, I could deal with that. If it knocked me down to a hundred thousand manpower, I'd be like, okay, I can't deal with that. But I can't, I can't know until I try, because at thirty percent, well, is that a big deal though? That that that's another thing. Is it a big deal? I have a lot of factories. Is it a big deal? I, I'm going to go with no, it's not a big deal. But anyway, uh, we are out of time. Thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. Um, I, I've been getting a lot of requests for it, so it's probably something I'm going to do next. I've been asked to play. A lot of people want to uh, want to see some Kaiserreich, uh, so I probably will play that in the near future. So keep your eyes out for that, and I'll see you all next time.